Hey guys, how's it going? It is Kara here with another Infinite Magic Raid video. And in today's video, I want to talk about my thought process on which mythic I'm going to choose. This is going to be my first mythic here, and I'm about 20 days into the game so far. So I wanted to break down the ones that I'm thinking about and explain my thought process on which one I'm going to get. You can see right up here in the top corner where I'm at, I'm at 26 shards. The get, getting these fast is requires a massive amount of whaling so i'm usually getting about five tops from these events a lot of these i only get like two shards from them so that, that's why it's going to be slow it's probably going to be about a month month and a half for me to be able to maybe even two months to actually get this because 20 days in 26 shards i think i have a better bearing on this game right now so i think i'm going to acquire them a little faster but at the same time this is a very slow process so there's about four of these that i'm thinking about getting as my first mythic and i just want to go through the thought process on which one to get and why i'm gonna choose one or the other starting with luna here this one is clearly the most popular one for a few reasons mainly the survivability aspect of being able to heal people and revive them and i think this is a great choice i think people are really justified in making this their first epic because being able to three-star the campaign is really important because people want catherine this is what i'm trying to do i'm trying to do it without a mythic and i have seen people do it without mythics and um, so far like there's multiple videos of people doing it most of those people have his here so i don't have this character and i think that would help out a ton in being able to clear pve content unfortunately I don't have them so maybe i'm going to need a little bit more help there also since i haven't played that long maybe my gears aren't as good so there's a lot of things there and i'm hopeful to be able to beat this campaign without someone like a luna to be able to res me up and make sure i three star the campaign because i do have really good characters this is the roster you're looking at right here I have a lot of legendaries, spend a decent amount of money in this game. So I have a lot of options here and this is who I have leveled up. And I'm just trying to think of which mythic would give me the most progression long-term. And I think Luna is a great choice, would really help ensure Catherine also would help out a ton in arena. As you can see, a ton of people here in the top rankings use Luna. So like, I like to kind of get some inspiration here. This guy went with Ben Austin. Okay, this is definitely different. We got a Lucifer no mythic there so you can kind of get the idea but mainly i see a lot of lunas maybe at my range uh which is you know like 1900 usually this is like right after reset so you're not seeing that but i have seen a ton of lunas in arena but maybe at the top top people are realizing ben austin's good another thing that would be nice about luna is that she is a force mark most of my good characters are force affinity because I have Gunner here, I have Malia here, amazing heroes for the Force Mark. Having extra support would be fantastic. I also have Zia and her as well. I forget her name specifically, but she's also a good hero. Probably Luna would take that spot. Obviously, I also have Liz, amazing hero. You can also argue that Liz would be replaced by Luna as well, just because of how good Luna is, and they kind of fill similar roles with how hard it is to actually level up heroes. You might want to just revert uh, Liz for luna uh, but i feel like that's a little short-sighted might not want to do that there's also other good heroes i got here too i really like slackdo here being able to put the res buff on people mutu's pretty good maybe only because he i can get him in um exclusive one uh, this guy is really not that good he, i think he uh, needs a buff but probably z is going to be the way to go here with luna you can really push up in the force force tower but i feel like me personally i think force tower is a little overrated because eventually it just becomes these things take four hours to get one every four hours and like let's say with luna i can get up to like floor 26 or whatever because the difference between 25 and 26 is insane and 30 is a whole nother beast but you do get these more mythic hero shards which is fantastic it's just the amount of stats you get yes this is going to be a long grind but because it's such a long grind i really don't want to focus too much on this because it, it takes 120 after you get to rank 10 of something it goes from 50 points um and then it goes up to 120 and then like for example here it goes 140 and then i have some speed ups here 160 then 180 i think you guys get the point here that this is a ton and this is so much for stuff just to get 0.3 stats so i really don't want to spend too many resources doing this especially when i can already beat stage like 21 whatever and then kind of get up there in a relatively same amount of time over the long term than I would if I really doubled down on being able to beat the Force Mark until you actually really start progressing further where you can get Catherine and stuff like that. That's going to take so much. So it's like, I feel like getting to this range is great. Then getting to 30 is amazing because then you're getting uh, Mythic Heroes. But this kind of in between takes so many resources for not much benefit in my opinion. So then that leads me to thinking, okay, what other parts of the game do I really want to focus on? 
I'm thinking guild boss is something that I really want to make sure I'm good at because just over time, the daily rewards of right now, I'm able to two key this so I can get 50% chance to get one of these and then 10% chance to get an epic book there, but mainly the consistency of getting these copper ores so I can forge gear and then also level two. So I do this one, I could one key this. So every day I'm getting seven of these copper ores and then a chance to get more excellent runes. And then also it really, it takes a long time to add up, but then you're getting the basic skill scrolls. So eventually, because I think epic heroes are going to get phased out. You you know every 10 of these is going to be one legendary skill tome so over the long haul we're going to be able to solve that issue of being able to book up our heroes here especially as we punch up to here so having a good team for further on in the guild boss i think is going to be really important because we're going to be able to get potentially supreme runes and then you know down here so ideally like thinking about because coming from raid what most people do is that they're able to like let's say way down in the line i'm able to like two key this uh and then um, one key, you know, halfway over here or something crazy like that. But this is, I'm just trying to think really long term here on what's going to be the best progression um, for me. And then also, super long term is going to be this faction wars. I think this is our faction abyss, incredibly important thing to focus on. Next character that I'm really thinking about going for is going to be Ben Austin here. And it kind of held my argument because of how many Ben Austins we saw at the top of the leaderboards for Arena. But mainly, what I was thinking about with Ben Austin here is what makes him so good is this right here. He has he has multiple things that make him good, but I think mainly this removes all buffs from an enemy target, then inflicts res buff from the one turn, cleanses all control effects from all allies and makes them pursue and attack this enemy target one time. So on a five turn cooldown, amazing ability there. He has 20% chance to cleanse all control effects from any ally who falls under control effects. I think that's insane. It makes sense why he's used so much in arena. And then we have deals two stages of attack, 100% attack damage each to all enemies with a 35% chance to increase the cooldowns of the targets, both active skills by one turn. And then lastly, we have his auto attack here. It deals 100% damage to a single enemy with a 30% chance to reduce their defense by 60% for two turns. Then the ally with the highest attack pursues the target target and attacks the same target one time so a really good auto attack there being able to pull in your best damage dealer so the reason why i was thinking about going him is because if we look at the gallery here he's in the same faction as catherine so this is something that we can double down on where catherine's eventually going to be a guaranteed character for everyone and as everyone knows if you've been following this is that she is just an amazing character probably one of the best characters in the entire game so her and every account's going to get her so this is a guaranteed thing then why not double down and making my account really focus on Catherine. And if one of the most impactful things that's long-term to do in this game is going to be the faction abyss with the auras there, I don't really want to focus on getting as many auras and good auras like the epic and the legendary auras as soon as possible. Why not focus on a faction that is good with Catherine? And then so I can come here, I can end up choosing Ben Austin, who's going to be good in arena, good in guild boss, good and, and uh, pairs well with Catherine in uh, the faction abyss. So it's covering all my bases there. So this is going to be an amazing team for me for Sword, Sword Harbor guards because you get Zia, you get Sigmund, and then Ben Austin and Catherine. So I think this is a really good odds of being able to focus all the way down here to really high versions of the faction abyss. So I think that's that's really good. And that's uh, my logic on wanting to go Ben Austin. And I think I'm most sold on Ben Austin at the moment. And I also think he's going to be great in dungeons too, especially bosses. So guild boss. And then when you finally get to the boss section of a dungeon, because you could just double down on reinvesting into Ben Austin here because his exclusives are so good because the damage is insane like to be able to hit those thresholds that you're going to need to hit to be able to uh, actually complete those harder versions to get those sacred shards you need to have these really powerful abilities and he's going to be able to do it every single turn every turn you're going to be able to br bring in and attack five all five of your characters are going to go in and hit the enemy with their auto attacks you'll have Catherine who's going to do the same thing when the boss always you you all counter attacks so you're going to have you're essentially um going three times every single time the boss goes once, which I think is insane. You have Sigmund to be able to do the the burns. I have Malia. I'm lucky enough to get Malia, so I'll probably use uh, her instead of Sigmund. Or Zeo will probably make it in there because she has a really good basic attack. I think he's going to do a really good job in helping me three-star the campaign because he's just such a good character. I have a lot of good characters from Doom Legion. I already have Gunner leveled up. I already have Liz leveled up. So I could just go Lucifer. And then I have the same kind of logic there of having a good character for Arena, good character for Faction Wars. He's an amazing single target damage dealer. He's kind of more selfish where he's going to be the, the main character instead of Ben Austin as a support character, but he's incredible. He has this, uh, one of the hardest hitting damage moves in the 
the game. The percentage attack damage to a single enemy deals 20% more damage if the target has a buff or debuff. Another amazing character is synergized as well with the characters already have in Liz and Gunner. And then everyone gets Oakman. So he would be another character. This takes a long time in the advanced arena. So eventually everyone will get him. I happen to have Vesma here. He's insane. He's absolutely insane in the clan boss or in the guild boss in this game. This is another character that I think people are really sleeping on, but he's actually really good. I just don't think he's a character that you could just build. Like most people are trying to focus on, on one thing at a time. And I think campaign is going to be the main thing. And I don't, he might actually be good in campaign too. So, but at the same time, I'm not hundred percent sure on that. I think he's someone that is going to be niche at, at worst. He's amazing at the guild boss. So that would be sick. He'd also probably be good in Faction Wars too. So I think this would be a good synergy and that I can really double down on this team pushing Faction Wars. Is that I'm going to have a ton more survivability with Catherine and Ben Austin here. And I think I'm going to do more damage because you have that everyone get in here effect where they all charge in and you can really target someone. And being able to re remove um, uh, control effects, I think he's just insane and it has synergy with good characters. Like this is some of the highest percentage of S tier characters you can possibly get in my opinion that's why i'm leaning more towards this but for how my account is and how my people are leveled up this is probably the way i should go and then the last way um i was thinking would be going for i want to say he's in that's what would be this guy right here so i think probably out of all these characters he's probably one of the best just standalone characters but he doesn't have the synergy to hit other parts of the game in my opinion he'd probably be the best at dungeons i saw this video by mac chan here he's a raid content creator but he's also really gone in on infinite magic raid and he went norvac nordak and nordak's insane he was able to be, he was able to do a uh, like a tower 30 or a dungeon 30 with him uh, and then most other dungeons he was able to do like 29 28 with him and it's because he can take Catherine's shield and then like double it, which is so insane for your survivability. And I'm realizing that shields in this game are going to be the main way of survivability uh, in this game. And so he has right here, let's talk about his uh, passive. So at the beginning of each turn, Nordak has a 60% chance to gain 30% defense, 20% speed, 25% crit rate, 30% crit damage, 25% effect res, uh, consolation um, uh, one for two turns, there's a 5% chance to grant one of these bonuses to his allies at the start of the turn. And then it goes up when you book him to 25% or a 25% yeah, chance for him to, oh, he has a hundred percent chance to get it. And then the ally rate goes up uh, to, uh, what is that? Five, 10, 15, 20%. So he has that, which is hilarious. And then right here cleanses all attribute uh, debuffs from all allies and grants them a shield respectively by 30% HP for two turns that goes up to actually a 45% max HP shield. And then this ult here grants damage immunity to all allies for one turn, ensures all self buffs with all allies. So he's taking Catherine's shield that he's going to get and then give that to everyone else. So doubles her shield and then also gives damage immunity. So amazing. And then the amount of damage that they put out in those higher dungeons is absolutely crazy. So you really need that extra shield to be able to survive in those places. So amazing champion here. I, I did pull Olga and I need to try her out. I think I feel like her kit is too confusing for me to really appreciate unless I see her in action. I need to just play her, see all the potential synergies that can happen. I just I'm just not putting it together. I do like this turn meter by uh, four stages uh, of 100% attack to each single enemy. The third, the three stages of attack reduce the target's turn meter by 15%, and the fourth stage inflicts silence for one turn. I feel like the turn meter, like the silence turn meter, it's it's kind of nice. Um, I just feel like it's weird that you're reducing all the turn meter and then silencing them. I wish it was something else. It just seems like it, it really shuts them out. I, I like that, and then that would be a really good thing on the boss. But um, space does such a good job on the boss. Uh, I don't understand this part of her. This is the main thing that I'm confused about. Is Olga takes 25% less direct damage when she is attacked by heroes with countered mark. Olga has a 18% chance to pursue and attack one time after an ally casts skills and deals damage proactively. See, this is the thing I want to test because. I mean, I can sit here all day and it's like what I think damage proactively means, but I want to see what the game thinks of that to really see how good it is. I think this character is just straight up uh, awesome. It, not really the most fun effect, but I think this is going to be a really big deal, especially in arena. Worst case scenario, she's like a advanced arena character, but this is clutch. Reduces the crit damage taken by all allies by up to, what is that? 22, 20, 22, 26% when Elena survives. When multiple skills increase okay so it's just it's only going to be this one 
and then right here increases the crit damage of all eyes by the same amount as the crit damage reduced so if you get her exclusive too which is i don't really like to say that for a character because it's impossible to farm that stuff it's just all whale stuff or you have to get lucky so mainly i just want to take this effect as as is and i think this is a really good effect and it's going to help a lot because in pv in this game things can crit so being able to take less damage there could help a ton with survivability and so i do think there is good heroes here but i don't have the really good ones i think Fiona's an amazing character and be able to kind of res and stun. And I also think this is one of the best bleed heroes in Alina here. So it is a good faction if you happen to pull characters here. I think standalone Nord Nordak might be one of the best, if not the best character to pick. Um, but synergistically from like other characters and just how good the factions are, this is really guiding me because I have two of the best heroes in this faction already. Everyone's guaranteed Catherine and Ben Austin is just one of the best anyway. And then because of how hard it is to um, actually level out these heroes, I kind of just want to pick one that I fully exclusive. I don't really want to sit there and um, get one at 100 and then get another one with 100. I want to just fully exclusive this character all the way. And I think he's going to be the best one to do that with, uh, at least from what I've seen so far. And then eventually way down the line, maybe pick someone else if I'm still playing this game by then, because this is, you know, I'm planning out multiple months in the future here. But I think this is um, the way to go. Like after kind of walking through my thought process on all these characters for me personally i want to do ben austin first um i think that's going to be my move just because of the characters i pulled how much i value faction wars over or faction abyss i should say in this game over uh like tower mark and then also as a bonus i get a really good guild boss character and i get a good arena character so and then i also think an amazing dungeon character too i really like that that's going to be my move but i wanted to at least explain in painful detail <laughs> uh, like my thought process going forward when it comes to this because i think this is such a big decision that i don't want to like recommend someone i want to give you guys my thought process on why i'm picking that character and helping give a better understanding to it because this is an impossible there, there's this is an impossible thing to recommend in my opinion to someone because it's so situational for their account for their spending level for the characters they pulled what their focuses are so that's why I'm giving this from the perspective of this is what I'm going to do. And hopefully you guys learn something from this or maybe you can give feedback. If you guys think this is stupid, let me know. If you guys have other stuff that you would think is smarter to do, I'd love to hear it because I love hearing all the different potential things in it when it comes to this game because there, there's so many things to consider and so many things to think about. Maybe I'm leaving something out that would be really important and maybe someone else would be way more important for me to pull first. Maybe just the standard luna plays the way to go but as it stands now i think ben austin especially in my situation is the way to go for sure worst case scenario you know like I, i'm not going to do this but this is why talking about it's so important the only way to correct that decision is you go here and you can spend a hundred dollars to then convert that character to another hero which i, do, I definitely don't want to do i am curious though if people have done this if this is something that it takes everything does it revert the character does it treat it like a um like a revert stone so you get all your stuff back but then you get the new hero. How does that work? I'm really curious on how that works. If anyone's ever done that, please let me know. So, you know, we can at least have an idea there, you know, worst case scenario. There's this guy here that definitely check out. He's, he's by far the most interesting. In my opinion, he has a really cool mechanic and it was hard to understand his passive unless, um, I really like that they have this. I believe he's a wizard's eye and you could just go in here and preview it and you can kind of understand this guy. I haven't talked to, I don't think I'm going to be pulling this guy at all um as my probably I, I couldn't imagine when i would get this guy maybe he's like sleeper op but he has a very interesting mechanic on like basic uh, intermediate and then advanced skills and he takes a lot of turns to ramp up he takes this and now you can do your advanced so you have to go like basic basic advanced it's a very look at look at this passive it's so crazy so it's like uh but that first part there immune to silence horrify and provoke like that's pretty sick uh, you know, so all these characters are really cool and there's so many different things, but, um, since we have so much time to, to think about which one to get, you know, talking, talking it through is I think the way to go because it'd be interesting. And also like, it's, it's cool to see the people that have already spent the money or been playing longer than me already have it, see what they like about those characters. So if anyone has already pulled these characters, I'm curious to know what, um, they have to say about it. If they regret their choice, if they're really happy with it, that'd be cool too. I think I'm going to end it here, guys. That's going to be my plan. Hopefully it was helpful. Kind of me walking you guys along what my plan is. And with that guys, I am out of here. Peace.